Ladies and gentlemen, it is finally happening. Paul George and the Clippers are going their separate ways, and the door is wide open for the Sixers to allow him to walk right through. We got the latest update from Sham Sharani saying that the Los Angeles Clippers have announced that Paul George has decided to sign with another team. The Philadelphia 76ers are expected as leading suitors. So this has been this game of chicken that we've seen for several weeks now between Paul George and the Clippers, really dating back several months as this kicked up during the regular season. And what we have is the Clippers setting their line in the sand, saying we're not giving you that fourth year on your contract and we're not giving you true max value. That is what Kawhi Leonard agreed to. The expectation was Paul George would fall under that same umbrella. And Paul George clearly prioritizing this long-term security and high capital of money that comes with it. Now, the Sixers have been watching from afar, just flaunting that max contract, saying, come here, Paul George. We will give you exactly what you want. We have a chance to win. We have a top five player in the NBA. We have an up-and-coming star in Tyrese Maxey. And we have all the money that you could possibly ask for right here. That has been kind of the dance that has been going on as the Clippers have looked at Paul George and said, look, bro, we know you're from L.A. We know that you like being here. Your parents get to attend every game that, you know, the situation is pretty good. We don't think you're actually going to leave. And Paul George is proving that that is the case. So we got this latest update from Law Murray, who's one of the greatest uh, Clippers reporters out there. He writes, per source, there's a real chance that Paul George will make his final decision tonight. The expectation at some point is that he will choose the Philadelphia 76ers. There are no other teams in the running at this moment. And to add to that a little, we saw Contavious Caldwell-Pope, who was seeming, seeing a little bit of attention from the Sixers. He officially agreed to a three-year, $66 million contract with the Orlando Magic. That took them out of the running for Paul George, as they no longer could afford that full-scale max. It looks very clear for quite some time now that it's essentially been the Sixers and Clippers. It's one of those. They're both meeting out in L.A. right now, and the decision has very much been made as there is no progress between Paul George and Los Angeles. We also got a really interesting statement here. Um, writes that the Clippers statement on Paul George parting ways following a significant gap in contract talks, exploring an opt-in and trade scenario and excitement about new opportunities and greater flexibility under the CBA to field a, quote, highly competitive team moving forwards. And a couple little of the notable paragraphs that I do think were worth acknowledging here is it writes that this, again, coming from the Clippers organization, that we feel fortunate for the five years we spent with him. Over that span, he went to three All-Star games, made the most three-pointers in franchise history, and helped lead the team to a place it has never been. His performances in Game 5 and 6 against Utah in 2021 won't be forgotten by anyone associated with the Clippers. We traded a lot to pair Paul and Kawhi, and in exchange, we've had five seasons of contention. Even though we fell short of our ultimate objective, we appreciate the chances we had with Paul. Heading into this offseason, our roster was constructed. Three great players, 33 and over, two of whom could become free agents. And it goes on to basically say, we will miss Paul. At the same time, we're excited by the opportunities we've now been afforded, including greater flexibility under this new CBA. Kawhi is an all-NBA player, and we believe T. Lou is the best coach in the league. We will field a highly competitive team this season and moving forward, use our organization organizational advantages to bring in top talent to the Intuit Dove. So that is the biggest breakup text I've ever seen between an organization and a player. But the point being here, Paul George, your time as a member of the Los Angeles Clippers is officially put to an end. Now, I've been putting off hopping on and recording this video. I wanted to wait for that official Paul George is coming to Philadelphia, but it does feel like the stars are so clearly aligning. We're also getting a peek at some of these other roster construction concepts that I've spoken on here a good portion that we know these Sixers are not just one Paul George away, that there aren't more moves that need to be made. But what made that so difficult is that rounding out that rest of that roster drastically changes when you don't know who that big fish is, that third star, that big high max contract guy. If this is a Brandon Ingram or a Jimmy Butler, we're talking about vastly different players around the edges versus who complements a player like Paul George. And while he's not perfect, while he's a guy that if he's your number one option or even a must-be number two option on a team, I don't think that's a successful way to run an organization with Paul George being that guy. But in the context of this Sixers team, with Joel Embiid, with Tyrese Maxey, I do think Paul George is perfect for that role. And to dive into a little bit for what he brings from an on-court standpoint, let's not brush over. This man is coming off an all-star season, still 22.6 points per game, 5.2 rebounds, 3.5 assists, 1.5 steals per game. Shot 47.1% from the floor, 41.3% from beyond the three-point arc on 7.9 three-point attempts per game. He's six foot eight, 34 years old, shoots 45.7% from the corner, 47.6% of all of his shots are three-pointers. He is a guy that is going to be that blend between Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid there. And it does not just stop there. That we're seeing a bit of how this roster is going to be rounded out with two other additions that we do know came to the table. 
number one, to start things off in free agency from the Sixers' perspective, we saw the return of Andre Drummond, who's coming to the Philadelphia 76ers on a two-year, $10 million deal, with the second year being a player option. We do all remember fondly the time in which Andre Drummond ultimately did spend in Philly the half a season before he was a part of that James Harden package. He was excellent as the backup center for Joel Embiid. And while I'm still a little bit skeptical of his postseason fit as a backup center, that I think he's a little more traditional of a center than that is the case, he is a guy who can straight up dominate games in the days in which Joel Embiid is not there. And to add to what he brought during the last season in Chicago, 8.4 points per game, 9.0 rebounds per game, which is crazy numbers there. Uh, a little bit light on the block numbers, 1.8 fouls, 55.6% from the field. 55.8% of his twos are assisted. His defensive box plus minus negative 0.7 and a VORP of 0.7. Still just 30 years old. There is a lot more of Andre Drummond that he still has left in the tank. And I know I mentioned the playing when Joel Embiid is not there. The other thing that was really cool that I just want to shout out Andre Drummond for is he was constantly like a positive voice. He he, he met, went to more Delaware Bluecoats game in the G League level than I've seen from any Sixers player. And it was very cool to like... I remember one specific time I was covering a game there where Paul Reed was playing. This is in the early development of Paul Reed, where Andre Drummond literally pulls up to the Blue Coats game in a Paul Reed Blue Coats jersey, which to me, I know this isn't anything that you can quantify as far as actual basketball skill, but that type of good vibes guy, like rooting on his teammate like that, is something that I think should be mentioned there. And beyond that, we got another move that the Sixers did make here. And this is a guy that I think could be even more impactful than Andre Drummond in the grand scheme of things. That being Eric Gordon here. So Eric Gordon has agreed to a deal with the Philadelphia 76ers. It is a minimum contract, so not something that is going to impact the salary cap by any sort of uh, any any part of that there. Now, the thing I'll say about Eric Gordon, we can cue the Daryl Morey only brings in former Rockets jokes. I know they're coming, but I will say watching last year, he had way more left in the tank than I honestly expected to be the case. And to dive into what those stats are for Gordon here, we're talking about 11 points per game, 1.8 rebounds, 2.0 assists, still shot 37.8% from three, 44.3% from the field, 41.3% from the corner, which I do think he will be doing a great bit of in a Sixers uniform, and 64.2% of his shots are threes. He's 35 years old, but still a guy that played 69 games last year, started a strong portion of it and played over 20 minutes per game. Like this was a guy with a real deal workload and delivered. There were stretches for that Suns team. And part of this says a little bit more about the Suns than Eric Gordon specifically, but you could really watch and he was their third or fourth best player by a pretty comfortable margin that they ran offense through him for points, which is really telling con considering the massive talents on that team, the Kevin Durant's, the Devin Bookers, that Eric Gordon was a guy who carved out a role from him. I do think he was more consistent than even like a guy like Bradley Beal. And I do think that he will get a more minimized role here in Philadelphia, which is the best thing for him from an efficiency standpoint and just overall extending his career there. So I get it. You can make the, the Rockets jokes, but the truth be told here, Eric Gordon on a minimum is great value here. And we are starting to begin to see how this roster and how this team is shaping up. That we know the trio of stars with Tyrese Maxey, with Paul George, and with Joel Embiid. And we're starting to see some of these role guys filter in. The Eric Gordon, Jared McCain is going to be a player that has a role on this Sixers team. I do want that noted. That I know he's a rookie. I know he's 20 years old. I know this is a win-now team. But the dude can straight up play. And I don't think he's going to be a guy closing games or anything like that. But there will be stretches this year where the Sixers feel the impact of Jared McCain here. And the biggest piece of this puzzle that's incredibly noteworthy is the, the selling point for why Paul George was option A for the Sixers team is their clip is still full here, that they still have draft picks. They still can flip picks. They still can make moves, a little bit of financial flexibility. And I even think some of this delay is maybe just really structuring what is the best case that we can make this work. Like, is there a situation where we maneuver the, the salary cap numbers a little bit where you're adding the possibility of bringing in a guy like Clay Thompson or something like that at this point in the game? I do think that's a part of the conversation. Because I do think from Paul George's perspective, he kind of pushed himself in a corner here where he was dead set on getting this number. Obviously, the Sixers have sold this vision of having this type of money available by backtracking off all the deals that they have, the Al Horfords of the world, the Ben Simmons, the Tobias Harris contract that they finally just got off, that they had this to offer. But now Paul George has got to figure out, okay, so if I'm going all the way to the East Coast, if I'm moving all the way across the country, it better be to win, that this is something that I want to actually – play a part on getting a ring on my finger, which he has yet to do. And I know the playoff P jokes. I know all those things. But I do think in the context that this version of Paul George, he's a guy who can be essentially a floor spacing, just three point shooter with more to his game than that. There will be the nights where it's Paul George time to shine for him to put the ball on the floor, get into his head, get into his snatch, little step back, that there will be the Paul George games. So having that 
including a guy who fits in the context of playing next to Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, this is an awesome day for the Sixers. And even this, this is something that says a lot more about the Sixers organization than Paul George specifically, but certainly in the modern era and really in the grand scheme of the Sixers, you can make an argument that this is the most impactful free agent signing of all time that you think we'll just talk in the modern era and forget the, the Dr. J era and like that type of thing. But this Sixers team will speak Allen Iverson and above. The big best free agent signing has really been probably a guy named Al Horford, and we all saw how that worked out there. This has not been a place where, you know, players have sought out to come. And maybe this is a step towards changing that. That in the short term, these Sixers absolutely improve their chances to win in this window. Hey, Knicks fans who are hanging with me, it was a fun, you know, week long run in a victory lap, but you're now leapfrogged for your actual chances of winning because Straight up, I think Jalen Brunson obviously is Jalen Brunson, but I would make the case that Paul George, Tyrese Maxey, and Joel Embiid are all comfortably better than Mikael Bridges, who's going to be your running two. And do you think Josh Hart is hitting the, at the rate of three-pointers that was the case last playoffs? You think Dante DiVincenzo is ready to run that back? You think those are here to stay legitimate? I feel pretty great about how the Sixers stack up with that team. And again, still work to do. That I'm still expecting a first-round pick to be traded to the Nets for a Dorian Finney-Smith or moves like that that will bolster this team even further. Further. But the Sixers are sitting pretty pretty right now and still got plenty of time to fill in the gaps from here. So this is a day that we should celebrate with the Paul George news. I cannot wait to get the official buzz. It might be by the time I have this video out and drop that it has hit my phone already. But I do think we can rest comfortably knowing that the stars align and this is actually happening for what's felt like a pipe dream and just a hope for so long. Ladies and gentlemen, it is here. You have your new big three for the Philadelphia 76ers. And I cannot exaggerate the miles of gap that is different between Paul George and Tobias Harris. That if you want to think about the context of this Sixers team and you just straight up take Tobias Harris off and put Paul George on, we're probably speaking this in an entirely different tune right now based on how the past couple years have gone. So shout out to Paul George for having the stones to force yourself out of there, taking the money and coming to Philadelphia. Now it's time to get to work. Appreciate all you guys for tuning into this video. Now, again, I will be live tomorrow breaking down a little bit more of this in depth. I'm hoping we have even more news regarding the Sixers, so stay posted for a couple videos. I do want to dive a deeper dive into the Andre Drummond and Eric Gordon stuff, so stay tuned for that as well. And the best way to do that is by smashing that subscribe button, hitting that bell to make sure you're not missing out on any notifications. Please leave a like on this video here and in the comments that you have below. I do really appreciate each and every one of you guys tuning into this video and very excited for what the Sixers season has in store. So appreciate you guys for rocking with me and talking to you next time right here on Sixers Digest. Peace.